and we just got back from lunch and I wanted to review with you guys the couple books that I'm reading right now. I figure this can be more of like a bookish kind of vlog. I feel like that's going to be super fun. So I'm going to run through the books that I'm currently reading with you guys and then I'm going to attempt to make my fall TBR today. So we'll be sitting down probably looking through like TikTok and stuff to see what inspiration I can get and then putting some stuff on hold from the library and also deciding if I want to buy some of these books as well. So let me just start with what I'm reading currently. So usually I like to have one book that I'm reading like in a physical copy and then one audiobook going at a time. So currently I am reading Reckless by Lauren Roberts and this is the second book in her series. I just finished Powerless last month as well as the novella powerful so coming off of that i wanted to read this one and be totally caught up with her series and i am right here with my bookmark so i'm about i'm at 76 pages so i'm not very far less than 100 pages this book is almost 400 pages so i definitely want to make a really good dent in it that's what i typically do on the weekends is i sit and i'll read for four hours usually one of the days or both of the days on the weekend so i'm gonna sit down and read this book probably get through a lot of it today and that'll be really nice but yeah i really enjoyed the first book um it's definitely a little more ya than i'm used to having read throne of glass recently um it's a little more juvenile but that's still fine it was a good story the first book and the novella powerful was i have to say one of my favorite reads of all of this year um, I really enjoyed having like a soft, docile character as the main character, as the main girl. And she wasn't like a total, you know, I'm going to beat you up kind of girl. <laughs> really enjoyed that. I'm excited to see where we get in Reckless right now. Um, I don't want to ruin anything, so I'm not going to give spoilers out. But somebody is still on the run. We'll just leave it at that. So... I'm gonna definitely read a lot of this today. And then I am actually almost done with my audiobook, which I'm reading right now called The Wall of Winnipeg by Mariana Zapata. I wanna say that's correct. I'll put up a picture of what that looks like, but I really wanted to read a football romance since we are now in September and football season is starting again. So I figured that was a really good one to start with and my friend did recommend it to me. So I am only about four hours left in the book and I think it's a 15 hour audiobook. So I'm really close to being finished with that as well. Usually for audiobooks, I'll have them on kind of as I'm either cleaning or cooking, doing chores, or walking with Kai. That's like when I like to have an audiobook going. I kind of get through them not very quickly. Maybe every couple of weeks I'll get through an audiobook, but I'm enjoying The Wall of Winnipeg. It is about a NFL football player and his assistant who they have to end up doing a marriage of convenience. And that's kind of the story there. It really hasn't gotten romantic yet and I'm still only four hours left in the book. So they're really taking everything slow, um, just like learning about each other. They really didn't know a lot about each other even though she worked for him for a while. So it's nice to see them build up that and it was kind of hard for them to make him not sound like an a-hole at the beginning of the book because he kind of ignores her when she works for him. So that was interesting. Like I could tell they didn't want us to hate him because something nice was going to happen later. So it's kind of giving protective vibes. Um, they're slowly, I think, falling for each other. And it's really kind of cute to watch. It's not very football focused, even though he is an NFL player. She just talks a lot. And I mean so much about how big this guy is, <laughs> how big his muscles are, how tall he is, how big he is, how much he eats. Um, how beautiful his thighs are, which is just hilarious to me. And he's a vegan football player who's like 350 pounds. Yeah, right. Sure. You could never convince me that that's the case. He plays like a defensive position, so he's huge. So there's no way that you could be vegan and be like that giant. I don't know. Prove me wrong. I just thought that was really funny. So we're almost done with the book. Um, I'll update you guys when I finish that one what my rating will be. So far it's seeming like a three and a half or four star. I think the ending will determine if it is a four star. I like it. It's like nice and lighthearted but nothing like amazing so far but I like it as kind of a palate cleanser from all of like the fantasy I've been reading. So let's just get to reading. <laughs> currently doing my makeup for the day. It is Monday 
and I did finish the wall of Winnipeg so I want to talk about it a little bit and then I'm also going to talk about what book I want to read next so the wall of Winnipeg um the ending not shocked me but like it kind of fell off from the rest of the book I'm not gonna like say what the story I mean it's not even like it was a crazy story it was a football romance um but the ending they finally you know uh did the deed and it just like felt that that writing just felt so off from the rest of the book I don't even think they needed to put any sort of scene in there like that I think they could have just left it out because it felt so misplaced because the whole rest of the story they hadn't even been intimate at all they like barely did a peck on the cheek or a peck on the lips like it just felt so out of place and I really wish that we would have gotten to see a little bit about the male main character's point of view like I feel like that would have helped us put the story together a little bit because he kind of was just like oh I liked you the whole time but we didn't really get like any more information about that. I think the author tried to hint at times when he liked her um but like it wasn't enough so I don't know it felt a little like something was missing there um but it was still cute it was a good light-hearted romance they had two epilogues too about their future together and so that was cute but I don't know I didn't really feel super connected to the characters I mean as opposed to something like Icebreaker I feel like they did that really well well of course like it was definitely spicy to begin with but they did really well kind of showing us the male main character's point of view as well as the female and that's like what I would base a good romance off of. I know that it's still like a trashy romance because it's smutty but like I liked hearing about both the characters and I feel like I connected to both the girl and the guy in that story versus this one I definitely didn't really feel like I connected to the guy at all. So anyways... I think it was still good though. I'd give it like a three and a half stars. I gave it four stars on Goodreads because you can't give it a half star. But yeah, it was okay. I definitely want to do a new romance audiobook. So I went and I looked at what was like available from my library on Libby and nothing that I want is. So I think I'm going to have to redeem a credit on Audible. I do have Audible for like $1 for the first six months or something. So I think I'm going to have to redeem it and I really want to read another book like The Seven Year Slip from Lauren Poston, Lauren Posto. Um, I really liked that book. It made me really like emotional and feel for the characters and that's what I want to feel when I read books like that. So I'm thinking I'm going to read The Dead Romantics which I think will be perfect to get me in like the fall mood. I think it's about a the guy is a funeral director and I don't really know what the girl's place in the story is, but I think I'll find out. <laughs> so I'm going to redeem my Audible credit for that one and start reading it soon. And then for Reckless, I don't really have many updates. I've only read like 50 more pages. I'm going kind of slow with Reckless just because I've actually been watching Charmed this entire weekend. So I guess I can also talk about like what I've been watching lately. So Ryan really wanted me to watch Charmed because he watched it when it was coming out like as a middle schooler and he really loved it and he loved the main characters and like the magic part of it. So we've been watching that together and I'm on I'm like in the middle of season two already and we've been just like watching it all weekend. We got a new TV delivered so we've just been watching it and we watched football yesterday too. So I've just been more like watching things rather than reading this weekend, which is usually like when I read the most is on the weekends. So didn't really get a lot of reading done this weekend, but I highly recommend watching Charmed if you haven't seen it, or even if you have just like rewatching it, putting it on in the background for a cozy fall show. Uh, because one, the outfits are killer. Like, oh my gosh, everything is so cute. <laughs> I think the season I'm on now, they're filming it during 1999 so everything is so cute and it's definitely coming back on trend so I'm getting a lot of outfit inspo for fall from it and they always have their hair done and their makeup done and it's just so cute but also like they vanquish demons and there's a lot of like spells and stuff so it's cool to see all that stuff and get me in the spooky mood but it's not too like Halloweeny I would I would say 
Like it's not very Sabrina, um, it's more cutesy. And then I was watching Sex and the City, but I've stopped. Honestly, I didn't really love it. <laughs> I watched, I think the first like 10 episodes and I don't know, the characters just seem so immature. So let me know if I should keep watching, if it gets better or something. But I don't know, it just wasn't, it wasn't for me. I'd rather watch like trash TV, like The Real Housewives than watch Sex and the City because they just make such bad decisions. And I don't know, it's like secondhand embarrassment and I don't enjoy that feeling. So <laughs> I've stopped watching that, but I've also started watching The Good Witch and it's on Netflix, but it's actually like a Hallmark original series. And I didn't know this when I first started it, but it actually was a series of Hallmark movies before it was even a TV series. So I have a lot of catching up to do on the movies. I think there's like six or seven movies out. So I've watched the first two and they're really cute. They never outright say that she's a witch, obviously because Hallmark, I think they're very religious. So they never really say that she's a witch, but she has like premonitions and she makes up concoctions for people and she uses a lot of herbs but it's super cute and they live, I think they live somewhere on the East Coast, like maybe upstate New York or something. So it's always cold weather there and so it feels very cozy just watching that. So I've been liking that. Um, I'm not very far on the TV series because I think I watched like the first four episodes and then I realized it was a movie series before that. So now I'm watching the movies and I'm only on like the third one. So it's just like a nice feel good to have on in the background. But that is the updates for now. I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna do a little something with my hair. I finally styled it curly for the first time in a long time. So I just need to like fix up the front and then I'm gonna go downstairs to start work for the day. But yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Okay, I am here with an iced chai and my fall reading list. So I'm gonna go through it with you guys, my fall TBR. And I just made this on the fly, kind of like looking at what I have already um, as far as books, which I only have one. I actually just bought one of these last night. Most of these are actually audiobooks that either I can get for free from my library that I have on hold. There's two that I can actually get on Spotify for free since I pay for Spotify Premium. I'm gonna go through the top, the top uh, three, and then Isle of Sin and Shadows are all physical books that I wanna get slash read. So I already have The Serpent and Wings of Night. Um, I think I'm taking a break from Throne of Glass, to be honest. I don't know, I just really need something different. I need to get out of that world for a little bit and come back later. So I already have The Serpent of Wings and Night, and that's the first book in, I think, a three-part series. So I'm gonna try to start that one, um, and it's about vampires. So that's exciting to me to get away from kind of fairies, which is what I've been reading about a lot in fantasy, and read about vampires. I feel like that's very spooky. And it is supposed to be a spicier book. I'm like kind of sick of Throne of Glass not being any sort of, having any sort of romance at all. I'm definitely a romance girl at heart. So yeah, I'm really excited to move into something that does have romance again. And then the Spellbroken King is actually brand new. I think it came out at the beginning of this month. And this is by J.A. Keaton. And it's like a demon romance. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> it's supposed to be like this bounty hunter that's coming after her. And it just sounded really cool to me. And of course it's a romance. So I did order that one last night because it just sounded really cool and I saw it on TikTok. So that one will be coming soon and I will read that. And then I have Throne of the Fallen, which I've had on my TBR for a while. Um, I just figured it'd be nice if I could read it sometime soon. This one is again about a vampire. So excited about that. I think like my theme for the next couple of months is gonna be like vampires, witches, spooky, ooky, kooky. So that's um, that one. And then the Isle of Sin and Shadows, I'm actually a little scared about because it is kind of supposed to be like a ghost story. Um, it is set in rural Louisiana and like the swamps and there are these ghosts and like shadows coming after people. Our main character gets trapped 
um, and has to be forced into close proximity with this guy who's protecting her from these shadows shadow monster kind of things so I feel like it's gonna be cool and I feel like that one is I'm gonna save definitely for October I'll probably buy it in October and that one is gonna be like my leading up to Halloween kind of book to get me in like the scary mood and then for audiobooks I have two that are free from Spotify one is the pumpkin spice cafe by Lori Gilmore and that one has gone crazy on TikTok um I would consider getting it in the physical copy book but I think it'd just be easier if I got it on Spotify. It's only like a 10 hour book, I think. And it's supposed to be really cute and cozy, um, just like a very lighthearted romance. And so I think that one's gonna be great. And then we have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. And I loved her book, The Seven Year Slip. So I'm thinking I will really like this one. And I think it's about, I know I said it was like about um, a funeral director. No, it's like a ghost. <laughs> it's about her falling in love with a ghost, I think. I don't want to read too much into it because I don't want to spoil it for myself, but it sounds a little spooky. So I think that will also be a great October read and it will be free on Spotify. And then the other three I have on hold from my library, I've actually already started The X Hex by Erin Sterling and I'm almost finished with it. It's really cute so far. It definitely has great vibes. Like they set the scene on pretty much everything that they're doing leading up to Halloween. And, you know, like it's talking about the storefronts with their jack-o'-lanterns outside and their twinkling lights everywhere. And she just talks about the setting around you a lot. And so that to me signals cozy and really helps me get into like the spirit for autumn. So definitely recommend the X-Hex, probably should read it closer to Halloween, but it just so happened to be available when I was looking for it. So that was really convenient. And then My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. That sounds really cute. Um, it's like about, I think it's her landlord actually is a vampire and he still acts like he's in the 17th or 18th century. And so he acts like a gentleman and stuff. And the all the reviews that I read of this said it was kind of like a comedy. So I'm excited to have something a little lighthearted because I have some of those a little like more dark romances lined up. Um, to have more like a comedy there. And then the other one is also a romantic comedy. This is that time I got drunk and needed a love potion at a werewolf. That's hilarious. So this is from Kimber Kimberly Lemming and she has like a series of books about like different mythological creatures and falling in love with them. So I thought that was really good for um, October, September, October. So I put it on hold at my library. It says it's at a four week wait. So that would put me right around like October 20th or October 16th. So I think that'll be perfect to read that in October. And it's, yeah, about a werewolf love story <laughs> and it is supposed to be spicy, so that's good. But I thought that would also be like kind of a fun one. They said the dialogue in there, in the reviews, um, says the dialogue is really funny and witty. And so I thought that would be also a cute little like reprieve from a little bit of the darker stuff that I would be reading too. So that's it for my fall TBR. I'm sure I'll change it and move it around, but that's what I have for now. And I will just chat with you guys later. Saturday morning. It's like 6.50. I'm on a walk with Kai and I just got the X-Hex in from my library so I will be listening to that on this morning walk. I have a bit of a collective haul for you guys so I did hit up Dollar Tree and then we actually did a trip to the mall earlier so I'm gonna share with you guys what I got at Dollar Tree first so I am throwing a spooky girls night Halloween party at the beginning of October so I picked up a few things for that I don't want to like go super overboard with it but you guys know me I can't resist <laughs> so the first thing I got is a tablecloth and this says rest in pieces on it with little skeletons and I thought that was so cute we're going to be painting pumpkins so I want to have a tablecloth to go on top of our kitchen table and then I want to do some themed cocktails so I found these little goblets they're so cute they're basically wine glasses but one is holographic and one is just plain black and then because I didn't find enough I did get a couple in like the purple as well they're not my favorite color 
but for $1.25, I figured that was a great idea to do some little spooky cocktails in. And then this is just totally random, but I found a purple light and I thought that would be really cute to put in our little like lamp while the party is going on. Hey guys, how's it going? I also <laughs> picked up these little skeleton hands and I figure I'll put them like by the food or whatever and like you know pick up your food with it or something I don't know but I'll definitely wash these first because I played with Kai with these with the, for a little bit so maybe I'll just set them out for like a fun little decoration and then I picked up two packs of creepy cloth which I plan on hanging um on top of our lighting above the table that we'll be painting at and super basic I just got a three pack of napkins got some little scoops for if we have like popcorn or like M&Ms or something and then a little serving spoon. And I also got two tongs. So I'm really excited to actually be hosting this fall because I'm hosting that party. And then we're also hosting Thanksgiving at our house for our families. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm trying not to go super overboard with like buying a bunch of stuff. So I'll probably just end up doing like paper plates and stuff for the uh, for Thanksgiving. But that's it from Dollar Tree. I definitely got too much stuff. So the first thing that I got at the mall while we were there is this oversized hoodie and I've been wanting a zip up hoodie for a long time. Just like a basic one to wear around the house that's oversized. I mean, and to wear out too. So I got this one, I believe it's from Brandy Melville. It's from the brand John Galt, but it was in like the Brandy Melville section. I don't know, but this is from PacSun and it was $48, just says New York on it. And this was the perfect oversized size. So. I got it because I've been looking for one for the longest time and we did go to American Eagle number one to buy jeans to buy some jeans to go with my boots because I feel like all of my traditional like Abercrombie straight leg jeans don't look good with heeled boots so I was looking for boot cut jeans and they had buy one get one 50% off I don't know if I want to keep both of them to be honest I might bring one back we'll see but they fit really, really well. And it said they were low rise, which is hilarious to me. So these are American Eagle kick boots and they are the regular length low rise. And I got a size six, I'm usually an eight, but I think American Eagle is definitely more forgiving with their sizing. Um, but yeah, this was low rise. It just hits right at my belly button, which is to me not low rise having been through the 2000s. But yeah, I picked it up in I would say like a medium wash and then also in a dark wash and I really wanted the dark wash to wear with my jeans. I just am not a fan of like the frayed bottoms so I don't know I'll try it on with my jeans and stuff and see what I think but again this is the kick boot low rise and they were really flattering on they felt so good and they were really comfy too because these are like stretchy and then because I couldn't resist and Ryan said that I should buy them I did pick up two Halloween shirts. Okay, we went to American Eagle a couple months ago, like the end of July and they had Halloween out and I was like, no, I shouldn't get it. And I've been regretting it. So I picked up this one, which is a skeleton and a pumpkin patch and he's so cute. And this is a size medium and it's huge, okay? It's super large, but it's the softest thing I've ever felt. And I think I'll definitely wear this as pajamas too. So that was this one and then I picked up a Snoopy one too and it says trick or treat and it is adorable with little bats on it and he's dressed as a vampire and both of these were $34.95 and they were randomly on 30% off so I think I paid like $25 for them so really good deal. Picked up both of these. Ryan said he would wear them too around Halloween but they're just so cute and I could not resist. <laughs> And then would you guys believe me if I told you I've never been inside Lush? I've never shopped at Lush. I've never used their products. It's, I don't know how I've gone this long without ever going into Lush, but it always felt kind of intimidating and it's honestly kind of pricey for what you get. I got two bath bombs and one bubble, bubble bar. So this one is the Brain Freeze and he was seven bucks. And I feel like college or high school Victoria would never have paid seven bucks for this, but I'm treating myself, okay? and it's very minty look at him so this is the pumpkin pumpkin bath bomb also seven dollars he smells so good 
Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to use this. I've always seen this like on social media and on YouTube and stuff and I've never bought one. And I just really wanted one. And then this guy is the Pumpkin Crumble Bubble Rune. So it is a bubble bar. And it's another pumpkin guy. Look how cute he is. And he's like a little sandwich. He smells delicious. And he was $14.50. So the sales associate did also say that you can probably get six to eight baths out of one bubble bar, which is great. And that was everything that I got from Lush and everything for my haul. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. I know I didn't, I said it was gonna be a book vlog and I didn't really read, um, but I've just been stuck on Charmed, you guys. <laughs> Charmed has been life for the last two weeks. So all we read was The Wall of Winnipeg, an audiobook, still reading Reckless and reading The X-Hex. So that is my little cozy vlog. Hope you guys still enjoyed that. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe down below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.